Peter here from the Esoteric Order of Games. It's time for a battle report. And today we're going to be playing Warcry. And my opponent is behind the camera right now. You're going to see his lovely face in a moment. It is Dylan. Hello, everybody. Yes, and Warcry. Now, this is the first time I've done a battle report of the new edition of the rules. Uh, the edition of the rules that added reactions to the game and made it even more dynamic. I've said before, I love Warcry. I love the system. It's new and in interesting. The graphic design on the cards is great. The reaction system is great. And it's a really interesting and fast playing system. So check out this board of terrain we have here. Isn't it gorgeous? This is, I think, about three sets of starter sets for uh, Warcry. So it's absolutely packed with gnarled wood terrain. Um, of course, you don't get this much in one starter set, but if you get a few, you can build up a nice collection like this. This is a separate piece that came from uh, an Age of Sigma set, but the rest is all Warcry terrain. So we're in the heart of the gnarled wood here, and we're fighting uh, with these two teams. So let's have a closer look at these two teams. I will be playing the Rotmeyer Creed. Here they are, here's the reference card, and as you can see, I've painted them all up. Nothing too original in my paint scheme, so I basically copied the Games Workshop ones. But we have a bunch of guys from the Narwood who are, are very uh, at home in the swamps and things, and they have kinds of hooking weapons and also blow pipes they like to use. Um, and basically, they also have this horrible reaction ability called, uh, what's it called? Bile blood, uh, which means that if you do critical hits to them, they can do horrible damage to you back. No doubt because they spray horrific um, bile all over you when you get uh, when you hit them, which is pretty horrible. It's like aliens, isn't it? And Dylan, say hello, Dylan. Hello. <laughs> he is playing the Horns of Hashut. Here they are, and they're the kind of guys who are really into dressing up with bull masks. We've got a guy with a flamethrower there. Sorry, Dylan, I'm describing your team for you, if yeah. you don't mind. And uh, they've got some nasty trident weapons. Uh, we've got a bunch of just lackeys here with hammers and things like that. And some guys with some nasty melee weapons. And what's your reaction ability there, Dylan? Breath of Cinder and Smoke. So it's basically don't get too close to me. If you end up a movement within three inches, um, they can use their Breath of Cinder and Smoke to do three points of damage. They're pretty nasty, especially this guy with a flamethrower, which has got a range of uh, six. So I'll be keeping away from him. So uh, you haven't actually played Warcry before, have oh, you? This is going to be new for me, yes. It's all new. Um, as I said, I haven't played the version with reactions as well. Uh, it's taken me far too long to get this back to the table, but this should be a gorgeous looking game. Really looking forward to playing it. If we make rules mistakes, well, you know, give us a bit of leeway. We're here to have fun, not do tournament games. <laughs> Now, I've already set up all the terrain, so we're not going to draw a card for the terrain. Um, usually you draw a card and you can use the terrain that's depicted on the card, but I wanted to use more terrain than you get normally. But the next thing we have to draw is the deployment card. So I've got one here called Escalation. The next thing we draw is the Victory Conditions. And we've got On Top of the Realm. So we'll work out how to do that. That looks as though... Um, it's to do with getting on platforms, which is really interesting. Because ah, yeah, we've got that, lots and lots of platforms. We do, that looks interesting. So we'll read that in a moment. And then finally, we've got the twist, which is <laughs> mind-shattering physics. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Each time a fighter uses an ability, roll a dice, change the value of the ability to match the roll. Wow. All right. Okay. okay. That's, that's going to be interesting. Physics that can shatter a mind. Yes, yeah, it's, it's all very Cthulhu-like, isn't it? Yeah. Lovecraftian adventure in the Gnarlwood. If you haven't seen how the system works before, you break up your warband into three roughly equal groups, the dagger, the shield, and the hammer. So you can see I've got three figures, three figures, and four figures uh, broken up in these different ways. Then when you draw your deployment card, um, you also, by the way, roll a dice, and the winner chooses who is attacker and defender. Then, when you look on the deployment card, you can see, okay, at the start of the game, we're going to set up our hammers within six inches of the center. Then on round two, the daggers are going to come in on these places in the corners. And then on round three, the shields are going to come in on the side. So they don't all come plowing in on the first turn. It's quite yeah, interesting. I like it. And you don't know beforehand, right? So you have no idea. You've got to make your bands as equal as possible, I guess. That's Absolutely. Right. And you have to. And because you're in the Nile Ward, anything can happen. So um, that's how we're going to do it. So we're going to set up our hammer groups. Hammer time! 
Well, the victory condition, as all these cards were totally random, but we drew one which focuses on the Realm Shaper engine, which is this fantastic pyramid thing that came in the, the last um, Warcry set. And this one is called On Top of the Realm. This is the victory condition. And basically it says, the after four battle rounds, if only one player has fighters on the seat of power, which in this case is the Realm Shaper engine, they're the winner. Any other result is a draw. So it's a huge battle royale over getting to the top of the Realm Shaper engine, which is super cool and very thematic. Absolutely love it. That's what we're going to be doing. This is going to be a very interesting scenario indeed, because well, this is where we're setting up. I've got three of my guys there, my hammer group, uh, within six inches of the center point, which is that one. Dylan's going to set up over there. Now we're both going to be going for this Realm Shaper engine, but the important thing to remember, well, there are two things. A, that it's four inches high, so you need a movement of more than four inches to sort of get up there and then get onto the top. You'll need, so you'll need either to do a rush move or a double move to get onto the top. Um, the other thing is, is that once you get onto the top platform, if you're hit and you're within half inches of the edge, half inch of the edge, you will fall off on a one to three. Now on a platform, you usually fall off on a one if you're within half inches of the edge and you get hit. But for some reason, it's particularly dangerous on the top of the Realm Shaper engine and you'll fall on a one to three. So even though we're trying to get up there, we really don't want to spend too much time up there because if you get hit, you're going to fall. So we're going to have to time our rush to the top of the engine till the end of the game, I guess. Mm. So maybe there will just be a free for all of killing and yeah. then a mad, a mad panic rush at the last People minute. falling down, tumbling down. Yeah. Just going yeah. blood splattering all over it. It's going to be... Uh, the Temple of the Sun all over again. Well, actually, here's an interesting point. I said the Temple of the Sun in Chichen Itza, um, but actually mm. the sacrifices weren't, uh, didn't take place on the Temple of the Sun. They took place at the Temple of the Warriors, which is nearby. You learn something new every day. Yes, there's a little tidbit for you. Right, so there he is, ready to roll his dice. And I've got to oh. say, that is a truly spectacular colour, that top. I just, I love it. <laughs> it's fantastic yellow. Um, we're going to throw our dice. Now, the great thing about Warcry is it has this really interesting dice system and in that you throw your six dice and then you take out the singles and they count for uh, seeing who has initiative. And then you take out things like doubles, triples and quads and you use those combos to pay for abilities during the game, which is really clever. But wait, there's more. You also get one wild dice. And when you get a wild dice, you can add it to your singles to try and seize initiative or you can add it to any of your um, doubles, quads or triples um, to improve those. But you don't have to use your wild dice every turn. You can save it and so you can get save up your extra wild dice to give yourself more punishing combos later in the game. Nice, interesting constraint on what you're going to do for the turn. It is, and so different from you know, the usual Games Workshop games. It's yeah. like someone came in and said, let's do something totally different. So let's roll those dice. Here we go. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, a lot of singles here. Yeah. I've got two doubles and two singles. How many singles? All singles, singles one double. Right, you're definitely getting the initiative. initiative yeah. Yep, and there's no way I can steal an issue by adding one more. one more. So I'm going to decide what to do with my wild. Now, hmm. in my case, I'm going to make it a five and make this a triple five. Now, sometimes the value counts. So it's uh, if I've got a choice of doing a triple three or a triple five, I'm definitely going to go with the triple five. So they, they're set aside for use during this round. Then again, I could save my wild die. And actually what I'm going to do is save that wild die for later on. Because in the first turn, I don't think I'll be needing it as much. Mm. And then I discard these because I don't need them. I'm going to make a triple five out of my... Oh. Given that it's a decent value, yeah, I think it's worth point. making a triple because I've got some interesting things that happen on a triple and they depend on the value of the die. Interesting. So. All right, so you're going right in. Maybe I'm... Yeah. yeah, we'll see. We'll see how that pays off. Uh, Dylan, just, you've just pointed out that we've got mind-shattering physics at play, so when you use any of these combos, you may not uh, get fives because you have to roll randomly to see what the value is. Mm, so there's using. no point worrying about the values up front. <laughs> it's, it's whether it's a double or a triple, and then you just see what you get. Because the physics are mind-shattering. Mind -shattering. So there's the setup. Dylan's got three of his horns of Hashut set up there. We're very close. We're only 12 inches apart. And we've both met in the depth of the wild wood, of the, sorry, of the gnarl wood, and decided that we've both got to get to the top of this pyramid to harness the cosmic energies up there. But, uh, yep, 
as always, there's always someone getting in the way of what you want to do. So, Dylan, you have initiative. Who is going to go first? That is the question. Mm -hmm. I, the guy with the flamethrower's got, you know, an itchy trigger finger, so I'm, I'm quite keen to see if I can get close enough for him, but... Especially since I'm in a bunch. I know, exactly. It would be perfect, but you're 12 inches away. Yeah. So and once you move, it's only four, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so that's not going to work. No, it's not. So in the first activation of the game, Dylan has brought this dude. He's climbed up the side of the tree and he's gone onto the platform there. Uh, sorry, the rope bridge. And another great thing about this game is that you can cut rope bridges while yeah. enemies are on them, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, but he's making an early run for the Realm Shaper engine. I suppose he's just going to stand there the whole time, isn't it? Well, exactly, because it's only a one there, yeah. not that, a one to three. He's not your flamethrower guy, I noticed that. He's That's not. Right. Yeah, I often do that. Sometimes I get range guys in positions and then everyone just avoids them and I, you know, they're wasted. Yeah, terribly. well, there's no avoiding this one, yeah. though. So I'm going to do something slightly different as well, and that's move this guy here. He's going to do a big climb up to here. It's going to take all his activation, two movements in a row, to do a big climb up the tree and get up to here. And now he's next to the Warhorn. This here, this is a special piece of terrain. And this Warhorn here, uh, next turn, he can use it to try and get some of my guys from reserve onto the battlefield early. Now characters get two actions per turn, and when they activate, they can move, attack, disengage, or wait. Now the wait mechanic is quite interesting in that you can sort of reserve one of your actions for later in the turn, or in fact reserve it for a reaction if someone attacks you. So it's a nice bit of strategy, especially now that we've got reactions in the game system. I'm very annoyed that I've broken the end off my warhorn there, you can see there's the ex exposed plastic, which is outrageous on this battlefield to have something unpainted. There's that little bit of exposed plastic. <laughs> it's really annoying me. I'm going to have to fix it with some green stuff. What a battlefield. It looks gorgeous. Adele just pointed out, of course, that you can't use the wait action as your second action because then your activation just ends. So wait action is used as your first action and then you save up your second action for use later. So this guy's used one action He's standing at the base of the Realm Shaper engine. He's saying hello to his buddy up there. Hey you! Where are you going? I kind of want to lure you closer. Um, well, thank you for giving me that strategic tip. <laughs> I'll stay away then. The problem is I haven't got much in the way of range weapons. I've got some blowpipes, but they can only be used on doubles. If only I had some doubles! So I've moved my carrion catcher with snatcher hook. Uh, he's moved four inches forward, and now he's within six inches of your guy up there, and I'm going to use a special ability. So this isn't a normal attack, it's a special ability called Blowpipe. Get out of the blowpipe and <laughs> You don't even know what's happening. Um, so pick an enemy fire within six inches and roll two dice. Now for each four plus, I'm going to allocate a number of damage equal to half the value. Now remember, because we've got uh, mind-shattering physics, the value on the dice is going to matter. Oh, yes. it's going to be, in fact, shall I roll the... Thing to hit. Oh, let's see. We go. Uh, four plus. Let's see. I've got a hit. Come on. Oh, oh no. no! Two threes. Okay, that absolutely it's, sucks. And that's it. That doesn't do anything. Um, if I'd hit, I'd do damage equal to half the value of the ability rounding up. And if I got a six, you subtract one for each six. It subtracts one from your toughness until the end of the. Um, battle round. Right. Oh, well, he's safe. So, yeah, basically, and you just don't even know. Yeah. You're just up there on the <laughs> thing. Maybe you heard something go past. Yeah, what's that? Insect. <laughs> Sorry, what did you just say? I said, damn those mind shattering physics. Yeah, exactly. I'd worked out, I've got, a, I've got a triple five, and that would be an excellent attack. I thought, okay, great. I can move in, do this nice, nasty um, flamethrower attack, but then. With mind shattering physics, there'll be a random roll. I might get ones, and I might only get one attack. Might get sixes, though. I could. This is Games yeah. Workshop at its random finders. Well, I foolishly just stumbled out into the open, um, and his flamethrower guy has obviously taken advantage of that. So See, that's exactly what I was waiting for. <laughs> I know. These rot my creed guys are stupid. So we're going to do an attack. Um, he's Changing within range. Flamethrower. So it's a regular flamethrower attack. Range of six, so you're well within range. Yep. You've got an attack of three, strength of five. Um, but because your own toughness is only So when you four, say attack of three, that's the number of dice you roll, isn't it? the number of dice. Ooh, three nice dice. catch. Yep. Um, toughness is? Toughness is your value. 
which is four for the character I'm aiming at. Correct. Strength of the weapon is five because yep. it's more. Then I will hit on a three to five and critical on a six. There it is. It's going to be nasty. Now the normal and critical damage are on the cards themselves, as you can see, they're divided there by slash. So, this is so going to be normal damage for this is only a one. You just get a seven. Oh, really? Okay. But a critical is a five. So oh, ow. If you've been within two inches, mm -hmm. had this other character been within two inches, I would have used my triple ability. Uh, because then I could have done the engulfing flames of dark artifice. Oh, jeez. Hit both of them in one Okay. Go. Be subtly named engulfing flames of dark artifice. Yeah, yeah it sounds odd. Okay. And I noticed the flames are actually blue, so it's some kind of horrible chemical weapon. It's not even. Yeah. Bound to be, yeah, it's, the same, it's the same blue as that. No, Ooh. they're not related at all. <laughs> this is, this is, these are lizard people. Same form of, some of yeah, energy. energy. Of mind shattering energy in physics. <laughs> all right, right, let's do this. Right. So, three to five. I want sixes. Oh, oh that it's... is the perfect roll, my friend. Well, almost perfect. <sighs> That is just one normal hit. That is unfortunate. That is a piddly one damage. Yeah, this is one damage. Wow. So, really just singed. I guess you're at the... You just lit the pilot light. Long range, yeah, that's right. It's just warming up. Okay. Yeah. One damage. So, let's put a damage marker on <sighs> this guy. This is where we are in the really kicks one, along. Right? So, this guy here, he, he is going to... I'm going to use my last double to do a universal ability, which is called Rush. And it adds one to the move of this fighter to the end of the activation. So if I do two moves, it adds one to each of those moves. Oh, okay. It's yeah. got a move of four, so that's five, so it's ten. You can really do ten. a big sprint. Is that right? Ten, yes. So he is going to go right over here ah, and get himself okay. ready to climb other side. on the other side. And he's a really nasty melee guy too, so he should be able to take on right. um, stuff at the top of the arm shaper engine. Wow, it's really just a rush for this... You know, we're all coming at it from different yeah, sides just about Yeah, but the brilliant here. thing is we can't just all clump on the top here because if we're we good. get hit there, we're going to fall. We've got to time it perfectly. Probably going to fall. I love it. Really, yeah. really atmospheric. Okay, we've just rolled our dice for round two. I've got a triple and three singles. And remember, I've got an extra wild die as well. I'm going to save that as well. I'm going for all out for later on. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got uh, two doubles. And two any, singles and saving my two wild. Two singles and saving your wild. So I've got an issue of this turn and I've got a triple to play with. Mind shattering physics is going to play in your favor. You've got ones, doesn't matter. Absolutely, that's actually really good, isn't it? Mm. Really handy. Um, so we are at round two now. So we look at our uh, diagram here. We're going to bring in people from the opposite corners, which is interesting. I'm blue, so I'm going to come over from that corner there. Yeah. And Dylan's going to come in from this corner here. And it's got to be within three inches of the corner. Right in the corner. Wow. This looks really great because they're just coming way in off the field. Look, got all that way to go in. They're my guys on the horizon. They've heard the sounds of battle. They're rushing for the battle for the Realm Shaper engine. Yeah. Now, That's something I have to point out, if I can interrupt slightly, is mention this fantastic game mat. Check it out. This is the first time I've used it. It's by a company called Deep Cut Studio and I'll put a link to them in the show notes. They make these gorgeous mats. Of course they come in uh, cloth versions and things too but these are the really nice neoprene versions. You can roll them up and they just sit flat as soon as you um, put them out on the board. As you can see the detail is just gorgeous and I particularly like this one and I forget the name of it, but I'll put it in the show notes. It's this lovely mixture of mud and grass. And I do have a grassy mat from them, but I, I've always wanted one that was a bit more rough and muddy and everything, because there's a battle going on. So, you know, it's mm. got to be a bit messy. Mm. Um, so I particularly like this uh, mat. I just think it's gorgeous. It's six by four. So it's beautiful, big size. Really, really high quality. The people at Deep Cut Studio sent me this for free. I actually wrote to them initially and asked them to send me some freebies so I could show them off on my channel. And we've had a bit of a relationship going for a while now because occasionally I write to them and I ask them for a few more mats and they very kindly send them to me. And I'm really happy to show them off and, and give them a good plug because I just think they're really high quality and I love them. They also have a custom service as well so you can even get your own graphics onto mats if you want to. So uh, recommended for me, I use them all the time, Deep Cut Studio. Uh, go and check them out. I'll put a link in the show notes, but it's very easy to remember. It's just deepcutstudio.com. Back to the battle. We've made a slight correction there. Because I'm using a four foot uh, wide battle area, 
that's not the usual area that you have for a uh, war cry game. So we're actually having 10 inches uh, in from these edges is where the edge of the battlefield starts. So we've brought our guys in the corners in uh, 10 inches. So they're a little bit closer to the battlefield now. It's a crucial thing to remember, otherwise they'd just spend the whole rest of the game running. <laughs> yeah, especially in this scenario. Yes. Yes. I think every game has to have a classic face-off, a blowpipe against a flamethrower, and that's what we've got in this game. Here he is. He's not close enough to charge into combat, and I don't have an onslaught ability anyway because it takes a quad. So I think I'm just going to shoot. See, I could get behind cover, but then you're just going to come around and find me. You know, life's too short. Come on, blowpipe boy. Around. I'm, I'm going to blowpipe you. Okay, blowpipe. Go to go for it. <laughs> Um, look, I've got two actions. I might be able to do two shots, which is good. So, um, it, oh no, I won't because I can only do one ability per turn. So, and this is an ability. Ah, so yes. I do it once. Ah, good. Oh, good, well. good. Never mind. I'll rush into, into cover after I've shot the blowpipe. Yep. So, I need four plus. Come on, come on. One hit. Wow. Okay, now that'll do half. The value of the dice, but because we've got uh, mind shattering physics, we have to roll ah, for the value we of the roll. dice. So, we have so it's going to be half roll. of this rounded up. Give me six. That's what I'm oh, talking about. No. <laughs> One point of damage. This goes. Okay, ping. Ah, that is pitiful. Absolutely pitiful. One point. All right, for my second move, it's a four. So I will run back Come behind on. the tree. I see. There we go. Running away, eh? <laughs> That's right, isn't he? Just goes, Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Run! And predictably, Run. Dylan is using a rush special action to get him to run into combat as much as Bring possible. Bring up the leader character. Yeah. Big, strong guy to get him in this close. I don't know if these guys are going to get into battle in time, really. Well, yeah. the corners. There's only two rounds after this. Oh, yeah. well, it's just luck of the draw. It's a it? skirmish. Yeah. Stupid. Just did a stupid, stupid thing. I had a triple. And I needed my triple to call the war horn here because I was hoping to bring in some of my guys from next turn a little bit early. And that's why I put him up there. But stupidly, I used my triple to blow a blowpipe. <laughs> Couldn't resist. Yeah, so annoying. So that is completely wasted <laughs> oh, sitting up there. Oh, dear. That's really... Oh. What a shame. <laughs> okay, so instead of blowing the war horn, which was his plan, basically he forgot because he's a lackey and a complete <laughs> idiot. He went, uh, did a double move down here, and he's going to sit here, and he's going to blowpipe anyone who tries to run through this gap. Open that. Yeah. Which is just classic, isn't it? You're running through the forest, and there's some yeah. dudes up in platforms in the trees. <laughs> exactly. Blowpipes at you. It's great to run. Great to run. Okay, it's on. Battle for the Realm Shaper engine. It's only round two, and Dylan has brought his flamethrower guy up onto the platform. Uh, he's left his other guy halfway along the rope bridge. And he's brought up this guy who is standing on the top of the Realm Shaper engine going before he falls off to his death, which is inevitable. <laughs> My guy has stepped up onto the platform on this side as well, so it's all about to happen next turn yes. on the top here. Yeah. I brought my other three guys in. They seem to be running for the ladder over here and so they can do a conga line across the rope bridge, which, I don't know, might be taking too long. Maybe I should have taken a direct path to the engine and gone up the side. But we'll see because it's only round three of five now, so there's a little bit of time. Will these guys make it into the fray in time? Will they get hit by the guy in the trees with the blowpipe? We're all about to find out in round three. Yes, folks, it's round three. We've rolled our initiative dice. I've got two doubles and I've added one of my wild dice to that to make it a triple. Still got two wild dice in reserve and I've got two singles. I've got three singles, so I'll get initiative. I got a triple that I added a wild to, so I have one quad. Oh, I love this. Mm. This uh, mechanic good. is great, isn't it? It's really good. Really, really good. Yeah. Okay, so you have initiative. It's going to be yep. interesting to see what happens over here. This is very exciting. <laughs> well, I can tell you what's going to happen. Yes. Something I'm going to use my four immediately. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. And the leader who's who was... Coming in from this corner here. Oh, we forgot. Hold on, before we do anything, we've forgotten our reserves. We have to. Round three reserves, yes. which happens after initiative, but before the first selection, so we haven't done anything wrong. We're going to bring in more figures. I've got four, you've got four. Most of them are just Ooh. lackeys, I notice. I come in right next to where you are. Brilliant. Oh, oh I'm no! I'm coming right here. I've totally forgot. Oh, <laughs> see, that's two <laughs> stupid mistakes I've made. <laughs> 
What am I Let's thinking? Hope it's you know why, folks? Because it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. It's a beautiful <laughs> winter's day here in New Zealand, as you can see. Um, I don't function very well in the morning. I'm using that as my excuse. This is something I love about Warcry, Warcry is how dynamic it is, especially with this sort of staggered deployment. So this changes things completely. Here are my guys coming in on this side. And here are Dylan's right on the edge, ready to go smack bang into my guys. And it really shakes things up. Mm. So much more interesting than just deploying your whole warband and going for it. Yeah. Love it. And also because it's just random, you never know what's going to happen most of the time unless you're playing a particular scenario. Which is actually great for us who dive in to try and just play a game that we don't play every day and all the time. Absolutely. You don't feel like you're at a big disadvantage from not having thought a strategy ahead of time because you're just reacting to what you can do. It's just fun. Yeah. And that's what I like about new Warhammer 40,000 and the combat patrols as well. You can just set them up and play. He's come in straight into engagement, so presumably you're going to attack this, this guy here with the blowpipe. Yes, exactly. Okay. I feel that happening. So, um... Let's find him. He's one of these dudes, uh, lucky guys. He's got a toughness of three. My weapon has a strength of four, so I will hit on a three to five, which would do two damage. Actually, I'm sorry. Equals a four. Sorry to interrupt. Um, that guy's got a shield, so in fact, he's one of the guys with the shield with a toughness of four. All oh, right. Sorry about that. Okay. Um... So toughness of four versus strength of four, right? Okay, so four That's, to five. Yep. Uh, but four attack dice. Ooh. His attack status four, so four attack dice. Because he's using a big trident. And let's see what happens. It's gonna hurt. That is two. And one, one critical. One critical. Which criticals do four damage. Regular hits do two. Ouch. So that will be six. Six. And you notice. No to no wound saving, step. No, no <laughs> so yeah. Especially... No take backs. I know. It's brilliant. <laughs> Just six. Who needs that two wound roll? Take it. Um, six damage. Okay, uh, that guy has got ten. Gee, they're not easy to oh, kill. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah. They're pretty tough. Well, well actually I shouldn't put that on that card because this card counts for several people. So you can use this and luckily you've got the little pointy end. Yeah. Well, hopefully you. you won't need those for long because I'm going to have another go. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. I want to do a counter anyway. We'll see how the counter works. Right. Uh, ah. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'll take advantage um, of that and do 10 damage. And it does one damage to you <laughs> before I die, I presume. Yep. Uh, I had to do that because we haven't done a reaction yet. That's the first yeah, time we've well, done a reaction, true. and that's that is true. the whole new technique. That's good. I like it. Now, I should have done that on the first roll. It would have been more effective, but yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay. We'll, we'll remember that now. So he's dead. Right. I've just moved my guy up into the platform, and I want to get within three inches of both of these guys because I have a special ability. Though Dylan has just said he's got a reaction, a special reaction called Breath of Cinder. Cinder and Smoke. Cinder yeah, and smoke. And so when you end a movement action within three inches of... One of my units. Yeah. Um, I roll a dice, and if I roll equal to or greater than your toughness, you take three damage. Now, does this take an action? It would, wouldn't it? So it yeah. To... Yeah. Who's but he action? hasn't. He hasn't been activated. He hasn't. So. So his action is available for doing reactions. So you want to use one of these half so, markers. So he's used one of his actions. To show, to show that he's used one of his actions. Uh, so what, what does this do? So what is your toughness? Well, this does. This is going to do three damage points. What the hell? And subtract one from the strength characteristic oh. of my attack actions made by that fighter until the end of the battle round. Oh, presumably, if you hit, I hope. Well, you've just activated, so. I've still got Oh, no, but that, yeah, but that's good because you've just moved. Yeah. So, this is a perfect time to do this reaction. Okay, my toughness is four. Okay, so oh, I just need a four plus. Come please on. miss, please miss. Three, oh. thank you very much. Okay, okay. I just go. <coughs> <coughs> God, mate, you, your breath really stinks. <laughs> Just for that, I'm going to hit you with, here it is, a slashing attack. It's a triple. Ooh. So I'm oh, you're using a triple. I'm using my triple. So get this, Ooh. roll a dice for each visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter. On a three to four, allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a five or six, allocate number of damage points equal uh, to the value of this ability. Which you would roll for. Okay. Which I'd roll for. So this is for each one, so, so one there's, dice. There's two within three inches. That's the idea. That's the plan then, yeah. So I need a five or a six Just to jump. do some serious damage. Let's do this guy first. Right. Come on. 
four. So close. It only does one damage. That's not quite as slashing and vicious as I'd hoped for. <laughs> so one damage to him. Let's try this other guy now, the guy with the flamethrower. Come on, give me a five or a six. A two. Oh, okay. Is it nothing? I'm very disappointed <laughs> by that. that. That was a triple. That is not devastating by any means. So now I'm going to attack this guy here on the top of the thing. And my guy has got a sort of horrible hooked claw net thing. It's only got, it's got a range of one. It's got four dice. So one, two, three, four. And it's got a strength of four. And don't you love this lovely iconic system they've got here, which is just the best thing Games Workshop ever did. It's beautiful. What's your toughness? Uh, let's see who you're going for. He's my toughest guy, actually, yeah, so course. good choice. Um, five. Five. Okay, so what you do is you, you hopefully remember this, but strength lower than toughness, which sucks. I only hit on a five and a critical on a six. Mm -hmm. oh, it had to be a toughest guy, didn't it? Yeah, he's perfect man for the top of that tower. Jeez, I'm not really going well here at all. Uh, oh, that's terrible, but one critical, which isn't bad because that does five damage. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. All right. Just sweeps his horrible yeah. hook net that's, that's into him and just all the little, it's like, basically it's like um, Hellraiser. All those little hooks go into his flesh, pull at his flesh and he goes, ah, this feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> And in a brilliant tactical move, <coughs> just complete uh, coincidence, oh, shit. <laughs> this guy can't use his flamethrower because this guy's within one inch of my guy, so he can't use his flamethrower at him. I, of course, planned that Whoops. all along. Mm, I didn't. <laughs> uh, three attack dice. Still on his fighting back. Heading on a five or a six. Wow, there's one critical. That's four damage. Oh, curses. Oh. I it's like a nice the, simple system this. It's lovely and simple and also, you know, even if you roll badly, if you get one critically critical you can do decent damage, yeah, which is nice. So it doesn't feel as disappointing as that old you know, the multiple roll thing in yeah. Warhammer 40k and Age of Sigma where you can just roll lots of dice and get disappointed. Here you can roll dice and maybe miss a few times, but you get one critical, you can get one good blow in, which is great. So how much damage do you do? Four damage. Four. There's a three and a one. We'll put that on him. Out of what? That's his All about tens, twelves. Uh, he's got what? wounds of eighteen. Oh, that's one of your tougher guys. He is a buff head. Okay, he's a he's big buff head with it. Look at him. I mean, he's a big guy with that's a that's true with a net, and he's not going to get chucked. Oh, however. Oh yes. We've got to remember. Haven't done that. Falling damage. <laughs> right, so you've got to do oh, it for your well, guy on. first. Hang on, you attack me first. I attacked you first. That means you might not have been able to attack. On a one to three. So if you roll a one to three, you fall off and you didn't <laughs> attack me. Excellent. Come on. Oh, yes! <laughs> he goes... Whoa! 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 Right, let's just and take that damage off. Thank you very much. Yep, and I fell more than um, two inches, so I rolled the falling damage. Yep. Um, and on a one, it is it's falling damage. He's around here somewhere. Falling, there it is. Falling. And on a one, I get three damage. Two to three, it's one damage. Otherwise, nothing. Okay. It's a six, ah, which in this case good. is good. Yes. He, he just sort of goes <laughs> and just soften the blow. Yeah, you think you'd sort of but land. now I'm all the way down the bottom, which is actually you think you'd land on his side or something, but there is no actual sort of. Falling no. unconscious or anything here, so that's well. That's there you go. Didn't take damage. Land that's down. excellent, right? He's up the top, going. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> However, now you can flamethrow him because there's no one in the way. Three strength of this weapon is five, and what did you say your toughness was? Four. <gasps> this looks fantastic. So These guys are about to enter the the gnarlwood. Yeah. A little row. Dun, 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 dun. But what's this? What's this over here? Anything might happen. Actually, speaking of, there's no hurry to do this because you've finished your activation. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do while I've got to take the initiative is my leader here will do two moves. Mm -hmm. charge, it's in the trees. Charge, it's coming. Charge up behind this guy. Eight inches. And then he's going to do a rampage. I'm going to use all four dice. Oh, oh, a quad. A quad. 
do a rampage ability, which means I get a bonus move and then a bonus attack. Hello. So, oh, nice. Another Look. move. That's fantastic. Right Look. up, snuck up behind him, charging from a distance. That is beautiful. And I'm just saying, <laughs> oh, look, he can't see me. Everything yeah, will be fine. Exactly. Oh, uh, brilliant. Um, let's, <laughs> let's end this well with some actual decent damage. Come on. Um, uh, look, I'm just going to say, I absolutely love this game. I think Warcry is a complete really winner. It is yeah. absolutely great. I mean, Kill Team is. Is more thinky and tactical, but this is just really atmospheric and fun. Yeah. All right. Okay. He's going to trident him up his jucks up. That's the plan. Yeah. So the three, three uh, the strength of four. Actually, this weapon, mm, not amazing. No, how'd you so be, we'll so, see how it goes. Imagine someone coming up behind you and just pinning into the tree with a trident <laughs> before you even know what's going on. Now it's going to be a four, five, equal. Um, my guy's got a toughness of four. Yep, strength of the weapon's four, so... So it's four to five or six. Five four to five hits. two or five damage. We've got some criticals here. Oh, no, no one amazing. more hit. Okay, just a little prod up the bum there. Yes, I see. Two points of damage. See you at the last minute. Ow! <laughs> just two points of damage. That's not going to make a big difference. He goes, just a minute. Just a little love tap. That was a long run. Well, my leader just put the, his hand on the shoulder of the guy next to him and said, I'm afraid it's up to you, pal. So he said, yes, boss. I don't mind sacrificing my life for the greater good. And he moved over here to engage these guys. So hopefully it will um, slow them down a bit and they won't be able to come into the main fray. So my guy over there has attacked uh, Dylan's leader dude. Well, I don't know if he's a leader, but he's tougher than these other guys. And I decided to do that, even though he'd be harder to hit than these lackeys, because I wanted to keep them engaged so they would have to do a disengage move and thus slow them down. So he's sacrificing himself for the greater good. Fair the, enough, too, because there's only one round after this, and yeah. it's all about getting to the top of this tower. It really is. You can't so, muck about. You've got to keep your eye on the prize. Yep. And at the moment, I've got the prize. <laughs> and I've got the flamethrower. <laughs> You've got the flamethrower. I'm going to need some criticals, because these the, the problem with the flamethrower, it's only one damage on a regular hit. Yeah, it's really wimpy if you uh, get a normal hit. Five and strength? What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness is four. Oh, yeah, they're all four, aren't they? Yeah. Okay, so three, five, three to five will be Now, hold on. Damage. Can I do any counters? No, because he's already activated, so I cannot do any reactions or anything. Yeah, what's your... What's your counter? You have a special ability that's no, that's, that's against melee attacks, I think. Um, it is, I can make a bile blood, so I can make this reaction when targeted by a melee attack. Yeah, that's, that's mm, true. I can't remember that one, but that's, that's, that's actually classic, because I'm sort of this diseased guy with bile for blood. Yeah. And you just don't want to even get anywhere near me. It's just like, flamethrower him! <laughs> He's repulsive. We're kind of Nurgle worshippers, basically. So we're diseased and full of bile and horrible. And you guys are like corn worshippers because you're into the sort of... Corn? Oh, corn is like, I know it's a stupid word, but K-H-O-R-N-E is the god of violence and killing right. things. Ah, uh, okay. Mm. Corn red. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, blood for the blood god is his uh, cry, right. whereas Nurgle is all about diseases and, you know, being up close and touchy-feely. Sounds like perfect flame-throwing material. It does. Let's see what we can do. Oh. Yes. Uh, Damn, three is... is not. No, actually. Is it? It's three to five. Have you got more than me? Yeah, I've got five. Yeah, it's three to five. Oh, curses. That's, a, that's six points so of damage. That is six points. Okay, that's third of the way, so that's, that's not. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Not bad. So I'm about to do it again. A couple of criticals uh, um, make all the difference. Oh, no. I need to get you off there. Yeah, well, because oh, they're... hold on, now you've got to roll to see if I get kicked oh, off. Oh, yes, yes, no, you do. <laughs> well, I've got to roll. Yeah, well, no. Three. One to three. One to three. <laughs> this is brilliant. This is great. Four. Oh. He holds on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's oh, do it again. Miss, miss, miss. Oh, two criticals. Oh, no. That is ten points of damage. Uh, it doesn't kill me. I'm still two away from death. Oh, because you've 18. So that's 16 oh, and I've got 18. Oh, so. Surely this knocks you off. Come on. Oh, can he survive? Okay, so Hold on, what'd you do? 10. You did 10. Yeah, oh, so two, bang. oh, there is a 10. There yeah. is a 10. There we go. And one to three. Oh, come on. Come on. Hang on, my mate. I think it's a two. I feel like two, two, two. You can do it. You can do it. Six! 
What a man! Holding on the slippery slope, but you've only got two two yeah. wounds yeah. left. He's he's What's going. That? He's up there going. Back up! Send me some back up! Yeah. It's beautifully cinematic. My leader is rushing towards him as he's struggling on the top here. Here comes my leader going, oh, I'm coming, I'm coming. He just rushed over from there. He's come to the base of the pyramid and he's going to be climbing up there next turn. Can he make it? Of course, Dylan's just realised that he can't bring this fighter past this one. And he's already activated, so he's stuck on the rope bridge going, get out of the way, get out of the way. So Dylan has moved this guy as close as he can, but he cannot get onto the pyramid. Uh, I've got two ready for round four. I know, because next round is the crucial round, so it's probably going to be these two guys. Oh, actually, those three guys versus my two, and he's almost dead, so, oh dear. I'm not going to get anyone else up in time. This guy is fighting him, and these guys are nowhere near the action. Oh, well, you could, yeah, you've still got to move them. I can move them all, but they're not going to get anywhere close enough. That's true. And they're not even going to get close enough to stop these guys, probably. So, yeah, just useless. And actually, this is interesting because this board setup is slightly wider than the boards you get with the game as well. So um, we actually mm -hmm. are adding a bit of space. The boards probably come up to about here. So, you know, even that could make a difference. Mm -hmm. So you've got to be careful with the amount of space that you use for a war cry board because obviously the game is designed to fit on a certain size of board because it's, it's fast and furious action. I've been saving up for this one, and that is the blowpipe down on the guy who's trying to run through the forest here. It's a classic scene. So here we go. I've got to pick within six inches, roll two dice for each four plus. Come on, four plus. Two four pluses. A one and a four. And a four. So that's one hit. One point of damage. And that is only one point of damage. I'm not too <laughs> impressed with the blowpipe. You've got to roll six to actually do anything yeah. decent. Yeah. So... A lot of the a lot of the real damage happens on criticals. Uh, yeah, no, he doesn't yeah. have it seems. Oh no, hold on. But, Sorry, I did make a mistake. It isn't one damage. Uh, blowpipe is four plus damage points equal to half the value of the ability. Uh, if I roll a roll six, four. if I roll a six, I subtract the um, one from your toughness. The blowpipe. Ah, okay. Yep. So it's this rolling uh, rounded up, half rolling out. Oh, one That's point of damage. Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, terrible. Oh dear. I still could have done three damage, which would have been useless anyway, because you've got, I don't know, how many points of damage? 12 or something? No, 10, yeah. Okay. Okay. The whole the yeah. whole idea of having the guy in the trees doing the blowpipe yeah. thing, it's a bust. <laughs> it's, turns out blowpipe's just not that powerful. No. <laughs> well, who would have thought? thought yeah. <laughs> of course, that was just an ability, so I still have my activations. So he's just going to jump from the trees. He goes, Wah! it's like... It's basically like if you've seen that really bad film clip of David Bowie and Mick Jagger singing Dancing in the Streets, at the start of it, David Bowie goes, Whoa! <laughs> does this slow motion jump off a ledge to join Mick Jagger below where they're both making really bad dance moves. That's exactly what he does. That's exactly what just happened. So he jumps down there and um, he can jump within about half inch, can he? So I think I can jump into engagement. Oh, yeah. you are an engagement. Right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a move, so he, he can jump and move, whatever. So he gets into engagement there. That is one. Now he has to roll for damage because he's he's going more than two inches. Yep. So that is... A one is three damage. Thank you, I'm glad you can remember two that. Two to three is one damage. Four. You're fine. You're right. He just goes, poor, dancing in the street. <laughs> and then he goes, ah, and tries to hack him with um, this spear-like thing. So oh, five, five or six. It's all about criticals. Can you Come get on, give me. Oh, oh two criticals. Two. Thank you very much. That will do eight damage. Ooh, oh, those criticals okay. are huge. Yeah, that's something. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, the blowpipe guy oh, redeems himself. It's like, screw this blowpipe. I'm just <laughs> going to jump down and hit you. <laughs> yeah. Back in New York City. At <laughs> the USSR. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fantastic. Right, well. <laughs> well, Dylan is just well, he's doing something which could change the whole course of the end of the game here, is that these two guys who aren't engaged with my lackey are running around the side and engaging my leader. So that's going to stop him because he can only make a disengaged move to get away from him of three inches, um, which is going to... I think that's going to stop him from getting anywhere near the top of that thing. 
So how's that? That's the whole game's going to come down to these two little lackeys <laughs> with their pointy sticks. And finally, this guy has disengaged from the combat here after he was poked in the back with a trident. And he's run for the base of the pyramid. Maybe he can help. Well, Dylan, it's the last round. Yep. What do you think's going to happen? I, I feel confident, to be honest. Do you? Yeah, yeah, I'm just sitting worry. here waiting with the flamethrower to try and clear the area before we've got I've got three potentials to climb up and end there. That is actually perfect though, yeah. Although we have to, if there's, if we each have a figure on the top, it's a draw. You actually have to be the only one. You do have to be the only one, yeah. yeah. On there can be the only one. There can be only one. Yeah. However, I've got this guy here, but you might sort of come up behind him. So actually, if I can win initiative and get him to the top of the tower. Initiative might be the thing, actually. Initiative is crucial. Yeah. Let's roll our dice. Yeah. We've got six dice. Let's go. And we're not bringing on, on any new forces. Yeah. We're all on the board. Ooh, okay. Two doubles. Good. Two sixes, two fives. I've got two doubles and two singles. Oh, me too. Oh, and we get another That's wild. Same. We get another wild. So you've got three wilds and I've got two. Well, we're going to use them, obviously. Player with the most singles has initiative. On a tie, players roll off and the winner has initiative because the player with initiative first declares how they'll use their wild dice followed by their opponent. So let's roll off to see who gets oh, initiative. The player with initiative declares it. Why? Oh, I've got a two. Same. And a six. Okay, so you've got initiative. You've got to declare first how you're going to use a wild dice. Right. It's all about... That's really interesting because you get to abilities. go first... But if you don't use your wild dice to change your initiative, I can just add one. That's right. And get initiative and seize it. And in fact, you can guarantee initiative because you've got more wilds than I do. Mm, interesting tactical decisions. Unfortunately, it's not back and forth. You just get to choose and then I get to choose and that's it. So you have to decide whether you want to oh, okay. hedge your bets to win initiative. There's a little just bit let of, me get it. There's a little bit of thinking here. There is. It's a great system. I really, really like this system. Okay, I think I've come across it. Right. I'm going to use both wilds to make one of these into a quad. Yeah. Yes, dear. Okay, well, I'll use one of my wilds to seize the initiative. Thank you very much. And then I've got two left. I've done the same. I've added my two leftover wild dice uh, to that to get a quad. So I've got a quad and a double, and you've got a quad and a double. Mm. And I've got initiative. You do. And you know what I'm what going to do, do with, my, with my quad? Hold on, but can he get to the top of the... But Hold on. He can't get to the top of the pyramid with only four. He needs five to get to the top of the pyramid. But he can do four. two moves and then use that as his ability. He can too. I mean, I hate to help you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I would have worked it out eventually. Yeah. Okay, so he will do two moves to climb to the top of the pyramid. This is great. So he's up there, he's done his two moves, and now he's going to do this ability here, which is that one there, which is a quad. In Snaring Strike, this fighter makes a bonus attack action. In addition, if that attack action scores any critical hits, the target fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions for the rest of the battle round. What? Which is sort of okay. You can still fire your flamethrower. Thrower. That's true. I could clear the. I can still yeah, clear it. But you can't move on to the. And the pyramid. guy's stuck behind him. And the guy's stuck behind him. Uh, so that might be good. You might actually clear the pyramid, but not actually be able to claim it. I've got one guy. But you've got another guy. Oh, that's <laughs> unbearable. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. This game is great. Okay. Now don't use those. I won't use double. those dice. Um, that's my double. In fact, you could actually okay. use it dice. So it's a bonus attack action. What do you actually roll? Um, oh, it's I see. it's an actual attack. attack. So he has got right. uh, a hooked thing. It's got three dice with a strength, uh, strength of four. And toughness is four, so you'll be it's hitting equal. fours and fives. Hits on a four and fives and six criticals. And I've got to do a critical to um, oh, yes. stop you from moving. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay. Really critical moment. That really is a critical moment. Uh, come on. Uh, we need lots of sixes. Come on. Oh, no! Two sixes and a five. Five. Oh my. That's God. incredible. Oh no! Hang on. That does. How much damage? Eight, ten points of damage. I've got twelve. Wow. Ah. And that's the flamethrower. So. Ah. Ah, if I'd killed him, it would have been amazing. Ten points of damage. Actually, I can put it on his card. Now, hang on. He's already got one. Oh, he's eleven. Eleven. He's got one health ah. point left. Ah. And oh, still got a sorry, you're just going to have to film this reaction because it's like... <laughs> so 
so close. So, so close. close. Ah. Look at that. That's amazing. Oh, However, wow. you are ensnared now with my hook. So you cannot make move actions or disengage actions for the rest of the battle round, my friend. And I still have to roll to see whether I fall off. That's true. That's true. But I only fall off on a one. Because I can get you on the end of my hook. Yeah. <laughs> Just dangle you. You only uh, fall, off, better not you only fall off on a one because you're not on the pyramid. Come on, give me a one. Yes! Oh, no. <laughs> And that might kill him because now he falls. As he hits the round, he goes, Poof, and his flamethrower goes, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, please, please die. Okay, roll please the damage. Die. No, it's a six. Oh, damn, that would have been so, just precious if it, if it just landed on his head. <laughs> oh, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, my. It does make space for him, goodness. but that is really, really cool. Oh, but I was relying on flamethrowing that, that oh. whole area clear. That, this game is amazing. That is so cinematic. Absolutely brilliant. He can climb back up. <laughs> Wounded and bloodied. No, he can't because he's dangling on the end of my hook. Oh, no, he is yeah. too. Oh. He's like tangled He in can't the hook. move. He can't move. Beautiful. Oh. I'm just dangling like a fish on the end of a, on the end of a hook. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. <laughs> so cool. Well, he's out of the way, but of course that brings... Um, frees up the space for this guy to come forward and he's trying to knock me off the pyramid because if he hits me, I'll fall off in a one to three. So it's a game of musical chairs. <laughs> it's going to be left. Take my hook with you. But take my hook, yeah. <laughs> now what's your toughness, four? They're all four. Uh, they're all four. Really? Much, yeah. Three, so I get four times. Hold on, this is, the guy with the, this is the guy with the hook. Yeah, he's four, yeah. Yeah, and my strength of the weapon's only three. Excellent. I'm just using clubs. Right. Um, so five to hit. Six to critical, but four dice. Oh yeah. Ooh, that's the first full full miss we've had actually. That is, yeah. Wow, looks like Lady Luck turned to my, me and said, bless you my son. And then turned to you and said, bugger off. Oh no, when a fighter within half inch of the edge of an open platform was targeted by an attack action, take a falling test for them after the attack has been resolved. Don't say go. anything about hitting. Good. Curses. Good. Curses. I it was when you're attacked. Okay, oh, that, let's see that it. That really sucks. One to three. Oh no. So I need four to six. This is crucial. Yeah. A six. Oh no. He holds on. Good on you, mate. Hold on. Bile filled scum are just hanging into the top. Hey, talking about bile filled <laughs> scum, I've got to remember that as my, as my reaction. Thank you for that. This is no good. Oh no, this is so good. <laughs> Look at that. So this guy's, he can't move. I've done my move so, and he's not on the platform. Yeah. So the best I can do is get up there. Yeah. And that'll and be two against one. I can't attack both of you. <gasps> but if you kill one, it'll be a draw. Yeah. Mm. Well, in fact, if you don't knock me off, it's a draw even. Right. So I'm going to carry on this activation by using my quad mm. to rampage, which gives me a bonus, uh, bonus move and a bonus attack. I will use the bonus attack first. Uh, the same deal as so last time. Okay, you're trying to kick me off. If I can get you off. Do you have? To, uh, it doesn't say anything about the order. You can do it in any order. Fair question. <laughs> fair question. Check May make levels. a bonus move action. Then they can make a bonus. <laughs> you got to check the rules, don't you? Then. Then. Damn, then. That cursed word, then. Okay. <laughs> well, all right. So my only hope is knocking you off. Um, so just that you, I attack you enough that you slip down and fall on my flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. on a flamethrower. This is the plan. All righty. Okay. Oh, that's oh, a pretty good roll. Okay. Hey, that's actually eight damage. Oh, ouch. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, however, is completely undamaged. No, he's got one point. So that is nine. He's got three left. Ah, uh, okay. So he hangs on, but will he fall is the question. Good question. Um, I need a one. one. You've stayed up there rather well. I think it's time to fall. What did I say? Nine. It's, uh, yep. it's three left. Okay. Um, I really got to stay there. I can't fall. I cannot fall. Come on, we need four to six, four to six, four to six. 
Oh, I made a mistake. I put one on there, but he you did two damage to him here. Oh, yes. So you just did... What did you just do there? I just did eight. You did eight. Oh, so he's got three is 11. He's oh, got yeah. one left. Yeah. That is so exactly let's get the same rid of these. The put a 10. Gee, they're on death's door. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know what I did there because I put two down there. I don't remember doing one to him before, but let's yeah. just say that that's what it is. Yeah, okay. So it just goes to show you've got to keep your record keeping straight. We're getting so caught up in the game, <laughs> we're forgetting to do it yes. properly. Well, I'm forgetting Most to do it. Most of them are individual figures, actually, so you can put it on the card. Yeah, but um, some of them aren't, so it gets very confusing. Each, yeah. All right, let's okay. see. Come on. Stay there. Stay there. Stay there. Yes. No. Oh, no. Oh, uh, so good. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. And, and then another roll. Damage. We'll see what happens. What was it again? Was a it one is bad. Two and a three is one damage. That's one. That kills you. That kills me. <laughs> oh, my oh, goodness. Yes. Now, I'm going to look back over that video and realise that you didn't have three damage, you only had two <laughs> yeah, damage, and in right. fact you still got well, one left. Well, to be honest, it won't matter whether you're dead or not. No, you're, it won't. You're not in the right place. Because he's activated, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. it. Oh, you but kick him off. He's gone. Unbelievable. But you cannot move. But I can't move. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you've, just got, you've just got one foot trying to step on. <laughs> no, you can't. Fall onto it. <laughs> Well, I'm being really sneaky here because, of course, this guy can disengage, so he can make it up here. However, this guy was in the way. He couldn't get on. So for my first activation, I just activated him. He's only got two points left, but he moves over here, hopefully to block this guy. He's just looking at it, down at him going, Ha! Hey, bullhead! Bullhead! I'm up here, you're not. Ha! And then for my next activation, hopefully I'll be able to bring him up there. I'm sure he'll survive because they're just two wimps. And then it'll be king of the castle. Well, that's my turn now. It is your turn now. I'm just <laughs> jumping ahead here, hoping that I'm that I'm going to win. He is activated. I love this guy just standing here going, oh, funny, I could go a bit more. <laughs> so close. Mm. That's one move. The next move, I will use my last double yes. to, um, to rush, which gets me four... Oh, you're movement. not serious. Plus no. One. Oh, no. You're going to block it. And I can sit right on the corner there. Hello. That is actually the end of my turn because that was both actions. This is really interesting. Well, this is one of these things where, you know, you've just got to, I think, go for the rule of cool. And uh, I did sneak up there. Now, I had to end up, because it was a disengagement move, I had to be one inch away from him. So I had to be back on the platform a bit. But however, I did have the advantage of having a, a double to give me an extra one to my movement. So I had yeah. five, and five inches enough to get up to there. And I think we've measured that and it seems pretty cool. So um, Dylan is very kindly agreeing with me that he can make it up to the top. So. Although that would still only be a draw if you can't knock me off. Why is that still a draw? Because I'm on the top. Because you're on the top. I'm, I keep thinking I have to have more people, but you've got to have, be the only people. In a way. Oh. Okay. Well, how am I going to knock did, you off? Did you use that double? I used that double to get that extra movement to get up there. Yeah. And I couldn't have used it for anything combat anyway, really, could I? Mm. No, because you, you couldn't melee attack from there. So, no, that was really... Oh, so here am I thinking I'm clever. I've got two two against one, but that's not enough. That's not the way this one works. That's we'll just call it a moral victory. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> well, it's not over yet. You've still got no. You haven't. That is over yet. It really isn't it? Except these guys. Well, even then, um, what can you do? There's no way I can knock you off. No, because there's only eight movement left, and you really have to be at the base of the thing to. Yeah. I don't have any doubles left. It's because I mean, I've still got these so it is, guys. it is because of them because I had to do a disengage move from them that stuffed it up completely. Well, no, even then, no, because no. you, you still had to knock someone off. It's actually quite tough to yeah. make sure that there's no enemies on there. It is. I mean, if you had a flamethrower, for example, that'd be quite. <laughs> yes, I've heard what happens to people with flamethrowers. They ended up hooked like a fish on a line, dangling from a rope bridge. That's Can't what happens to them. That. Can't believe it. Well, we're going to call mm. it. We're I think so because. Um, because these guys aren't going to do any anyone any there good. There was no way I could not. Yeah, no, that's it. That's, a, that's a draw. And we haven't got any ranged weapons that are going to make a difference. 
It was a good tense last round though. Really was. There's plenty of opportunities for that to actually yeah. be decisive. It was. It could have gone either way yeah. at every point. There you have it, folks. War Cry. And I've, this has completely rekindled my love for this game. Um, I used to play it before the reaction system, system and I loved it. And now it's got the reactions. It's even better. Um, I think this is a great skirmish system. It's, it, it's, I'm going to, I think it's the best game Games Workshop make. I mean, I love, Kill Team is great, and I probably mm. raved about that last time. I did. And that's, that's good for something a bit meatier and more tactical. I mean, you really have to watch every move you make in Kill Team, especially when you're in mm. the corridors. Um, not so much when you're on a, a big board, but if you're doing the Gallo f full uh, spaceship chronicles, you, uh, corridors, you've really got to keep track of every move. But for cinematic fun, this is yeah. a beauty. It's a winner. I mean, that was just like a, a full-on action movie, just... Two warbands just piling in desperately trying to climb. You could just see them climbing yeah. up to the top of the pyramid going, ah! yeah. falling off and the guy being hooked on the end. Yep. <laughs> and ah, this is and so it could cool. have been a totally different scenario as well. Like next time it would be yeah. it might be a different situation altogether. That wasn't I mean that that's the great thing about this, is that that's a combination of random cards gives you this yeah. whole different feel. The fact that we had uh, the mind shattering physics plus those victory conditions. Absolutely brilliant. And I've yeah, got to say, I, I love having the extra terrain. It's a real indulgence, but having the extra t terrain really makes it feel as if it's a, it's a forest. Mm. And for, you know, the starter sets have a, a starter amount of terrain, but you really want a, a few, at least two sets to have a, a decent amount mm. of the gnarled stuff. But of course, you could put any other terrain you want in as well. Um, must point out again, this mat, it's just gorgeous. Absolutely love playing on it. It's great for rolling dice on. Um, and it just looks beautiful. I love it. So deepcutstudio.com. Go and check them out if you're interested in gaming mats. And I'm going to be showing off some of their other mats in future battle reports because they sent me three new ones last time. So we've got a great new one for Dystopian Wars and uh, another couple of ones as well, which I want to show off. So keep them in mind. And uh, yeah, that's Warcry. Thanks for a fantastic game, Dylan. Yeah, great stuff. Well played. Enjoyed it. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Um, the other thing about Warcry is that you can get this compendium and this has an amazing amount of content in it. All the figures from uh, Warhammer Age of Sig Sigma and all the special warbands they've made for uh, Warcry and gives you all the stats and special abilities and everything for them. So I was just saying to, to uh, Dylan that you can get something like this and for example I can get my Nighthaunt figures from Age of Sigma and easily make up a really interesting warband for Warcry. So it's a really good book because you can repurpose all your figures. And this is something that Games Workshop would never have sort of done in the past, but they're doing now, which is great. Getting the figures from um, other games or their main games and allowing you to repurpose them for a skirmish system. Um, fantastic. So if you're into Warcry, definitely worth checking out the compendium. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Uh, this is the Esoteric Order of Gamers. Go and check out the website because... Uh, there's so much there to enjoy, not only like 500 videos of stuff, lots of other battle reports and things as well, but also something like 450 rule summaries. I've got one for Warcry as well, so you can yeah, download nice. it and refer to it. It's really handy. It's got a play reference sheet as well. Download it and print it out. And uh, yeah, you find all kinds of stuff there. Also check me out on social media and I've got a Patreon channel if you want to support the channel, which would be highly appreciated. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.